Welcome! I'm Sister Vincent, and I'm going to be talking today a little bit about art. Um, art is a way for us to express ourselves, our feelings, our emotions, and our ideas. There are so many different kinds of art in this world. There's literature, as in poetry, short stories, novels. There are the performing arts. There's music, dance, theater, and film. There's also sculpting, photography, crafts, and many other forms of art. And even if you just look around our city, you will see art everywhere. There's art in advertising, in architecture, in the buildings around us. And um, here are a few pictures I took of some murals in my neighborhood. Also, I love these pictures of these artistic cars from uh, a neighbor down the street. Got artistic and creative with their cars. But for today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about two artists that were painters. Both artists lived around the same time in the United States but both are extremely different from each other. Our first artist is Georgia O'Keeffe. She was born in 1887 in a farmhouse in Wisconsin. Her parents were dairy farmers and she was the second of seven children and the first daughter. By the age of 10, Georgia had decided to become an artist and she and her sister received art instruction from a local watercolorist. O'Keefe studied at the School of Art Institute of Chicago and then in 1912 she taught art in the public schools in Texas. She attended Teachers College of Columbia University um, also, O'Keefe, like so many other people at the time, became sick during the 1918 flu pandemic, but she survived, um, which many other people at that time died of that. Soon after, O'Keefe began working mostly with oil paints instead of watercolors, and by the 1920s, she began making large paintings of natural forms, such as blossoms at close range, as if seen through a magnifying glass. She painted um, many of these, Petunia number no. two, Black Iris number no. three, Kaya Lily turned away, Corn number no. two, and Black Hollyhock Blue Larkspur. She moved her artist studio from New York to Taos, New Mexico. O'Keefe explored the land often in her Ford Model A, which she bought and learned to drive in 1929. O'Keefe went on many pack trips exploring the rugged mountains and deserts of the area. She collected rocks and bones from the desert floor and made them and the landscape forms in her artwork. The beauty of the surroundings inspired, inspired many of her paintings. And one of her most famous paintings is Summer Days, a painting featuring a deer skull adorned with various fl wildflowers against a desert background. When O'Keefe was older, she had trouble with her eyesight, but continued working in pencil and charcoal. She died at the age of 98 in her home in New Mexico. And over her lifetime, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award and the National Medal of Arts Award. And even today, her art is still loved and admired. All right, our next artist is Jackson Pollock. He was born in Wyoming in 1912. He was the youngest of five boys. Jackson grew up in Arizona and California. While living in California, he went to the Los Angeles Manual Arts High School from which he was expelled or kicked out of, and he had already been expelled earlier from another high school. Later, he moved to New York City and Pollock was introduced to the use of liquid paint in an experimental workshop. He later used paint pouring as one of several ways to paint on canvases. 
He bought a house with a barn and turned the barn into his studio, where he could lay large canvases flat on the floor for him to work on. He developed what was later called his drip technique. During his early life, Pollock explored Native American culture while on surveying trips with his father. Pollock observed Indian sand painting demonstrations in the 1940s. Referring to his style of painting on the floor, Pollock said, I feel nearer, more a part of the painting, since this way I can walk round it, work from all si four sides, and literally be in the painting. This is akin to the methods of the Native American sand painters of the West. He used hardened brushes, sticks, and even basting syringes as paint applicators. Pollock's technique of pouring and dripping paint is called action painting. He used the force of his whole body to paint, which was expressed on the large canvas. Time magazine dubbed Pollock Jack the Dripper due to his painting style. Many people thought his art was amazing and his work sold for high prices, but there were a lot of other people who said that they didn't understand his painting and thought it was absurd. Jackson Pollock suffered from alcoholism most of his adult life and died at the age of 44 in a car accident while he was driving under the influence of alcohol. People today still recognize and admire his famous drip style paintings. All right. Now that you know a little bit about these two different artists and these two different styles of paintings, I want you to try your own Pollock style picture and your own O'Keefe. So on the floor is a large piece of poster paper, or I should say your canvas, and you will each get a turn to do a drip onto the paper. And when it is all finished, we'll have our own drip style painting. And also you will each get colored pencils to be able to make your own close-up of an O'Keeffe style bloom. I hope you have fun exploring these different styles, but mostly I hope that you find your own style and, that, and what kind of art that you like to do.